Here are two standard infinite series that are related. Sure, you can find the sum of these series using classical techniques, but let's see a geometric way that computes the sum of both of these infinite series using regular polygons. Start with an equilateral triangle. The interior angle of this triangle is pi over 3, which can be rewritten as 2 pi over 3 times 2. Now draw a square around that equilateral triangle with side length equal to the base. The interior angle of the square is 2 pi divided by 4, and so the angle between the square and the triangle is 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 3, which simplifies to 2 pi divided by 4 times 3. Let's extend this again by drawing a pentagon with side length equal to the square length. Again, the interior angle of the pentagon is 3 pi over 5, so the difference in angle between the pentagon and the square is 3 pi divided by 5 minus 2 pi over 4, and this simplifies to 2 pi divided by 5 times 4. We can continue this extension process by drawing larger and larger polygons around, so we start with the hexagon, and then we move to the heptagon, and so on. Using the interior angle theorem, we see that the angle difference between the n-gon and the n-1-gon is n minus 2 times pi over n minus the quantity n minus 3 times pi over n minus 1. And this simplifies to 2 pi divided by n times n minus 1. So the angle between the regular n-gon and the regular n minus 1-gon is always 2 pi divided by n times n minus 1 as we extend this picture out. But now we can just keep extending this picture, drawing more and more regular polygons where the number of sides increases indefinitely. In fact, we can consider a limiting shape of this process. The limiting outer shell of the resulting shape is a circle. By zooming back into the original equilateral triangle, we get an amazing fact. The angles that we've determined can be added together. So we see that on one hand, the full angle measurement is 2 pi over 3 times 2, plus 2 pi over 4 times 3, plus 2 pi over 5 times 4, and so on, each time adding up angles of the form 2 pi over n times n minus 1. On the other hand, all of these angles together form the full angle measurement of a horizontal line since this line is tangent to the circle, and therefore the sum of the angles must equal pi. But now we can cancel the pi and the numerators of the fractions on the left with the pi on the right, and we see that 2 over 3 times 2, plus 2 over 4 times 3, plus 2 over 5 times 4, and so on, must equal 1. If we then add 2 over 2 times 1 on the left, and 2 over 2 times 1 on the right, which is 1, then we get our first famous infinite sum. Notice that each fraction on the left is 1 over n choose 2, where n choose 2 is a binomial coefficient or a triangular number. This means that the infinite sum, where n ranges from 2 to infinity, of 1 over n choose 2, is equal to 2. We can also divide both sides of the equation by 2, producing another famous infinite sum, the one where n ranges from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n times n plus 1, and this sum equals 1. These infinite sums are usually computed by recognizing the infinite series as a telescoping series, but here we've shown how to find this infinite sum using a limiting process on an amazing diagram constructed by larger and larger regular polygons. If you like this video, check out my playlist on infinite series. There I've animated classic visual proofs that compute the sum of infinite series in interesting ways.